Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be explaining the South China Sea dispute. This issue has been making headlines for several years, and I want to give you a comprehensive, complete breakdown and analysis. But before we begin, it might be ideal for you to have an overview of this region. Why is it so important? Where is it located? Let's look into that. So the South China Sea is located in the southern and eastern part of Asia. And the major countries surrounding this region are China, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Philippines, and Taiwan. It's a strategic location for trade. As you can see in this map, the South China Sea opens to the Malacca Strait to India and the Middle East, if you go westward. And then you can go through the Hormuz Strait or the Suez Canal to enter UK and Europe. Similarly, from this Eastern Hemisphere, you can go through the Malacca Strait and through the South China Sea to the Pacific Ocean and trade with Western countries. So it's essential for trade. The highlighted region here is the South China Sea. So its significance is not limited to only trade. It's also rich in seabed resources, such as oil and natural gas. But again, its most essential attribute is trade importance, because nearly $5.3 trillion worth of trade go through here annually. Now, another viable option might be circumnavigation. But what does circumnavigation mean? In circumnavigation, there's two options here. If you look at Africa, they can either go through the Suez Canal or they could go around Africa's perimeter. So going around the perimeter of a country is called circumnavigation. And going through the Suez Canal is a shortcut. And it's a more feasible option because circumnavigation has several problems associated with it. It's costlier because Obviously, circumnavigating would mean covering more distance, which requires more fuel and more resources. Similarly, it also results in a de delay in the delivery of goods, which could be in violation of the trade contract. So coming back, we can see the significance to this map here. The South China Sea can open through to the Strait of Malacca, which results in entering the Indian Ocean. And if we go eastwards, we can enter the Pacific Ocean. So recently, to maintain their dominance or to assert their dominance over the region, China has been making excessive maritime claims. So maritime claims, if you recall, are claiming a territorial sea. And excessive maritime claims involve claiming territorial sea beyond the prescribed 12 nautical miles. So according to the UNCLOS, United Nations Convention on Law of Seas, which established maritime law for international usage of international seas, only 12 nautical miles from the coastline would be considered as a part of a nation's sovereignty. And if you're making claims beyond this 12 nautical miles, then it's called an excessive maritime claim. Another form of excessive maritime claim is requiring advanced notification for innocent passage. So normally for innocent passage, it's also known as accidental passage. If a country's ship enters the sovereignty or territorial sea of another country, it would be declared as innocent passage as long as they're not fishing, polluting, conducting military or surveillance operations. So. China has been doing both of these. They've been claiming territorial sea beyond 12 nautical miles, and they've been requiring advanced notification for innocent passage. And normally for innocent passage, you don't have to notify the country in advance they're entering because, as I mentioned earlier, it's on accident. So the South China Sea is a highly disputed territory because the countries that I mentioned earlier, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam, they all have legal claims over this region. So as you can see here, all of these countries, according to the UNCLOS maritime laws, they would have their exclusive economic zone or territorial sea in the South China Sea as well. But China is following the nine dash line, 
which was defined by an ancient Chinese cartographer. And according to this nine dash line, China has exclusive claim over the entire South China Sea, including the Spratly Islands. And so this obviously won't fly well with the other countries such as Vietnam, Brunei, and Philippines, because it's intruding their sovereignty and it's making them unable to derive resources or maintain trade relations. So China is claiming sovereignty over this through this ancient de defined nine dash line, which is completely illegal, especially after the establishment of the UNCLO's maritime laws. So to make this make to make their point and assert their dominance even further, China has been investing heavily in artificial islands or man-made islands. So far, they've established over 971 acres across the entire South China Sea, particularly surrounding the Spratly Islands. And this is known as the cabbage technique because they're essentially folding the leaves of cabbage or they're surrounding the Spratly Islands with their military artificial islands and making it impossible for other countries to make any claim over the South China Sea or the Spratly Islands. And also, according to the UNCLOS, any maritime features, which are rocks, islands, or low tide zones, would be under a specific country's sovereignty. And since these islands are China's, they belong to China, that means they're gradually increasing their sovereignty, which is an impressive loophole, but also somehow somewhat illegal. So the purpose of the artificial islands is one to expand their military influence because each artificial island is a neo-military base and they're flaunting their latest advancements and their strength in their military. And also, as I mentioned earlier, they're increasing their territorial sea boundaries. So there's several problems that are caused by expanding through these artificial islands. One, it's restricting freedom of navigation. Two, it's intruding into the sovereignty of Southeast Asian countries, and it's not in line with the UNCLOS. And three, it's destroying their coral reefs because construction of each artificial island requires excavating these biodiverse rich coral reefs. So it's bad for the environment, it's bad for economies, and it's bad for the sovereignty of a country. It's killing three birds with one stone in the wrong way. So this is why US and now Japan even are conducting freedom of navigation operations, phone ops. So they challenge excessive maritime claims like China is making. And the way they do this is by opposing the claims through their infringement. So suppose China built this island and they claimed illegal territorial sea around it then intentionally the U.S. would challenge these claims, which are inconsistent with the legal divisions of the ocean, by sending their military vessels through this region. And so suppose if China claimed as an illegal passage, then the U.S. would retract by saying that, first of all, this is an illegal territorial sea which you have claimed. So that's how freedom of navigation operation works. You challenge their inconsistent territorial claims by violating the territorial claim. So in the past, the U.S. has conducted five freedom of navigation operations. And four of them were challenging the requirement for authorization in the case of innocent passage. And one of them was challenging straight baseline claims. So what is a straight baseline claim? So if you're making illegal boundary claims of territorial sea, then it would be considered as a straight baseline claim. So the UNCLOS define a specific method for drawing your territorial sea boundaries. You can't draw in any manner you feel like because that would be inconsistent. As you can see here, the straight lines, they prescribe the correct way of drawing your boundary lines. And these dotted lines describe the incorrect way. So obviously, you have to go from point to point rather than island to island, because through that you're getting more territory. 
So that's a straight baseline claim. If you're making illegal boundary claims without adhering to the method of drawing your boundary lines, which were described and established by the UNCLOS, that's called a straight baseline claim. So now there's a plight for peace in the Southeast Asian region. So either there's permanent peace or temporary peace. In the case of permanent peace, we have to clearly define our sovereignties. So Vietnam, Brunei, Malaysia, and the Philippines have to define their sovereignty, and China has to respect their sovereignty. So all the parties have to work out a peaceful agreement in how they're going to work this out. And this could take several years of peace talks and a conclusive agreement. But until then, we can maintain a temporary state of peace, which is keeping the sea open and inclusive. There are several economies that depend heavily on the South China Sea, and it has to be open and inclusive and free for all. Because circumnavigation, as I mentioned earlier, is not a viable or economically feasible option whatsoever. It would require high expenses, which would essentially nullify the purpose of trade in the first place. So here are some of my solutions, which I think are best to fix this issue. One, all countries that ratified with the UNCLOS have to abide by the UNCLOS. China is making expansionist claims, and they need to end this because we're living in a democratic, sovereign society where each country a nation has prescribed its own borders. Secondly, as I mentioned, we have to stop expansionism. And lastly, we have to change the guidelines for innocent passage because in some way I agree with China because at the moment, the innocent passage is becoming a loophole for several countries to invade the territorial sea of other sovereignties because it doesn't require advance notification and it requires entrance into a territorial sea. So I think you can change the protocols and guidelines for innocent passage and at least require an advance notification because we can't be for sure what the countries are doing in the other sovereignty. They could be fishing, polluting, and conducting military slash surveillance operations. We can't be sure of that. So innocent passage guidelines are due for a change. And these are my three solutions. So that concludes this short video on South China Sea dispute. I hope you had a greater understanding and now the news will make more sense to you. Thanks for watching once again and until the next video, this is Nishal Tube signing off. Peace.